My name is Jan Tumler. I'm an art writer, and we are here in Hollywood at the Tanya Banakdar Gallery, where the first solo exhibition by Yonzi is being presented. Yonzi is the lead singer and lead guitarist of the Icelandic experimental rock group Sigur Rós. I would call them a sort of 90s variant on the progressive rock template familiar to listeners of Yes and bands like Genesis and so on. Loud, quiet, slow, fast, uh, taking in all kinds of references from outside pop and rock idioms. I've been painting and drawing my whole life and it's fun to move music into different space and maybe make something sculptural also at the same time. Yeah, it's different. When you do music or like shows, you like come in, play a show and go and you get like a rapturous applause. But when you go into galleries, it's like people are like speculating, checking things out and like serious and so it's very different, <laughs> different experience. This show is actually made up of three separate rooms. Each one of them sort of has its own soundtrack, is one way to put it. They're all very different, but they're all tied together by one factor, which is Yonzi's voice. When viewers first walk into this show, perhaps the first room that they go to is the white room, which contains the piece Whiteout. The only things visibly in it are these two plinth-like structures that one can sit on. There is a quite complex sonic machinery that's been embedded into the walls. This room has like a 10 speakers in the walls, which you can see. Kind of like they use the wall as a transducer, kind of like it amplifies the sound. And then you have other speakers in the floor also. So sound is moving from speakers to speakers and stuff like that. The walls are what transmits the sound. And so we could say the material is the room itself. The entire room therefore becomes a kind of sculpture. This particular white room carries this dense layering of Yonzi's own voice that comes to swell into a kind of polyphonic choir. It almost sounds like it's being sort of called out across the tundra or something. One has a sense of vast spaces. So it's like a bass kind of on my voice. This is kind of like 12 voices or something coming from different speakers. So it's kind of more like a Renaissance choir feel to it. And then it kind of goes into different, maybe a sculptural sounds, more like a step feeds in snow and stuff like that. And, and also, yeah, have a snow blind when you're in like up on the glacier in the snow and you kind of don't see the reality or the world or where it begins or ends. Also, my biggest fear is running out of gas in the middle of Iceland somewhere. <laughs> The idea was there would be like nothing in the gallery, but it's like a lot of stimulation, like sound, invisible, smell, and light which is coming from outside. And it is a part of the composition, so it is synced with the music. So it comes in and out and fades in and out. And I just wanted to even exaggerate the room even more. If it's not white enough, I want to have more brighter. Looking up at the skylights, you can see that there is a sort of elaborate LED system installed up there. These lights, I would call a kind of accent on the sound. They're extremely subtle. Acting also as an accent is the 
olfactory element. Each of the three rooms has a particular scent that is periodically infused into it. I like going somewhere to a gallery and be like enhanced. <laughs> be like, I want to feel something in any way possible, if it's a sound or smell or like, I don't know, anything. The smells in this is like ozonic and like kind of cold to me a little bit. In the dark room, which is titled Dark Wave, it takes a little while for the eyes to acclimatize, but once that happens, one does notice that there's a kind of canopy that is programmed to ripple like waves from one side to the other. In my mind, it was always supposed to be like a wave, like above you, so you were underwater, and there's like a smell kind of strongly of seaweed, and then it's like a panel in the ceiling, and then it's like it has eight like hybrid directional speakers. It's sound like old Icelandic poem. They only work when you're like right beneath them. It's interesting to walk around and you always kind of hits you, the sound is kind of like a whiplash or something. It's like kind of nice. It's kind of somehow sensual or something. I was like, you can feel it more than I hear it. This Icelandic poem is being recited uh, under the breath in such a way as we hear the entire body. We hear sort of watery sounds uh, juxtaposed with what I take to be as the sound perhaps of like a creaking ship hull. All of the sounds there enclose in on one in a way that is opposite of the first space where the sounds reverberate uh, outwards. So it has um, this kind of like beautiful romantic quality to it and also to me it has kind of like this darker undertone. Iceland and sea and fishermen are always, it's just a horror story, it's just people dying in, in the olden days. <laughs> In this room, which is dominated uh, by this uh, structure titled In Bloom, what we hear is the sound of a foxglove plant's electrical signals, which are converted into a kind of sonic output. And then on top of that is Yonzi's own voice. From the foxglove flower, from the stems and leaves and the bulbs, you get some kind of electric signals information you, and you change that to media information, that you, then you change that to my voice samples. Also as just some like manipulated nature sounds like weird birds or like a weird nature. I also kind of saw some like insects, like, like crawling and stuff like that. This is the only piece in the show where the sound equipment is openly manifested or demonstrated. It's an accumulation of speaker cones arranged to resemble perhaps a plant that's climbing up the corner. They've been outfitted with these very lethal looking spikes, which one could correlate with uh, the thorns of the plant. The spillage of wires, which one might take to be some kind of root tangle. And then finally, these butt plugs, which are placed right in the middle of each one of these speaker cones in a direction that I would call somewhat cheeky. Butt plugs, to me, are really beautiful sculptural elements, but are really kind of taboo, or like if you bring your grandma in here, she doesn't know what it is, but some people might know. So I think it's interesting. I like that the foxglove is like really pretty, really beautiful. When you look closer, it's like really deadly and like <laughs> poisonous. <laughs> The main smell there I wanted to have was like a cadaverine, which says smells exactly like sperm or cum, or also like dead animals and meat, and also leathery and kind of like reminded me of somehow of some leather clubs or like sweaty dungeons somewhere. So. <laughs> it almost feels excessive in relationship to these other two rooms, and the sound I think in this room mimics the excessiveness of the, the speaker system because the sound feels very hot, like it's the sound of a hothouse or a jungle. That is to some extent paradoxical since this sound, more than the others, is the product of so much technological 
maneuvering. Yonzi is always in some way answering back to some kind of environmental sound in what could be termed a kind of duet. We were talking about how can you move music to gallery spaces and what can you do as like a sound installation. It's, it's always going to be different than like shows or concert. You can definitely explore maybe more and like go deeper into things and like try different things that you would never do on the stage. What is particularly unusual and original is that unlike many other sort of rock and roll stars or show people that have made a move into the art context, Yonzi does so to further explore the music that he makes, to take it apart and to put it back together. There's a kind of analytical aspect to these procedures, but that analytical side is constantly mitigated by the emotionalism that is inherent in both the music that he makes on his own and uh, the music of Sigur Rós.